Hi guys, welcome to my video. My name is Darren Maths Guru, and it's really good to see you. If you can, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and there is mathsguru.com for you as well, where all the videos have downloadable notes, time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more. What are we looking at today? Well, this is the start of a new topic in the general maths course. You're going to go, general maths? I'm not doing general maths. Don't worry about it. Matrices, if you need to know about matrices, these videos are going to solve that for you, because I'm going to look at what a matrix is, the order, what the elements are, rows, columns, square matrices, and of course, the all important know how to use your CAS. What's a CAS? It's a computer assisted software calculator. I don't actually know, it's a calculator. Leave it at that and let's just move on. Now, recap of past learning. Yes, matrices, I still don't understand what that movie is all about. I've watched them, all three of them. No idea whatsoever. You understand? <laughs> let me know in a comment below. In fact, if you're on YouTube, leave me a comment, let me know how it's going and head over to Masker. Remember, download these notes now. You can write all over them. It makes life so, so much easier for you. Now, obviously, matrices are quite important in this course. We do the foundation now. If you're going to do further maths, that becomes much, much bigger. Smash this now, you'll be sorted. But matrices basically has something that has like rows and columns. And my advice to you is if you think about it like cinema seating, where you have rows and seat numbers, you won't be too far wrong. But let's go into this. Here is, ladies and gentlemen, a matrix. Now, all matrices generally have a name, okay? And it's a capital letter. So it's important that we know that it's a capital letter. There's my capital A, and it stands for something. We'll get into what it stands for a little bit later on, but all you've got to realize is there's square brackets, and then there's a number of numbers inside. And each of those numbers are organized in a row and a column. Job done. They can be zero, one, negative numbers, decimal numbers, doesn't actually matter, but they are filled with numbers, sometimes letters, but numbers is what we're used to. Now, each of these numbers is called an element, right? So as I say here, this number seven here is an element. That number two is an element. That number zero is an element. So that particular matrix has nine elements. And believe it or not, elements have addresses. Yes, not like, I don't know, a post or address like we have here, but we'll come back to that now. So the elements of a matrix have to be defined some way, and it actually makes life a lot, lot easier for multiplication a little bit later on. So here we have a capital A. Now when our matrix is called capital A, all of our letters or our elements have the little a. And what we do is we give it an address by using the first number is its row number, and the second number is its column number, R. So for example, if I have a 1, 1, and that's a little subscript, it's written just below, that means row 1, column 1. And ladies and gentlemen, row 1, column 1 will be there. So that would be my element A11. And I've given three other examples here. Element A12, what does that mean? First row, second column, ka -ching. A21, doesn't mean A21, A21, means the second row, first column. Notice you have to think about that for a moment. And A33, third row, third column. So if I asked you to find element A22, then hopefully you realize you'd be going to your second row, one, two, your second column, and that therefore would give me three as my element. Now there is maths related to this, and there are questions coming up that ask you to sort about elements. Then we talk about orders of matrix. Ooh, orders, I'm not giving it an order, but we need to try to describe how big a matrix is. And that's very much what we use order for, to describe how big it is. And the way, again, we describe it is row followed by column. Notice it's always RC. Now I always joke, because it's like, as I wake up in the morning, feeling a bit RC. <laughs> Awkward. Okay, but the point of it is we talk about matrices as the number of rows followed by the number of columns. Now, we could, for example, call this one here a three by three matrix, right? So three with a kissy kissy three is a three by three, three rows by three columns. Or we could write the words three by three, or I've seen it three by three as well. Either way, just remember that that's rows followed by columns. There's a couple of other examples here. So we've got matrix B, for example, is how many rows? One, two, three, by how many columns? Two, right? So that's given by a three by two, three by two. And again, one by three, let's just check is that right? One row by three columns, ka -ching. Now, why is this important? Because later on, it'll help us decide whether we can actually add, subtract, and multiply matrices. So whenever you see a matrix, the first thing you should really do is write down its order. You might not need it, but the chances are you probably will. 
More language, a row matrix. Now this is where I like general math because it sort of makes sense. A row matrix is a matrix what is one row. One row, there we go. That is a row matrix. It's a one by three. Now it doesn't have to have that. I could have B is equal to one, four. That's also a row matrix. Or Y is equal to zero, one, two, three, four. They are all row matrices. They have one row of numbers, end of. Clutching, <laughs> column matrix, let me guess. Uh-huh, that's a matrix that has just one column. So there we go. This is an example of a three by one. All right, because it's got three rows, but one column. We get a S is equal to one, four, minus seven, three, zero. This would be an example of a column matrix. Now you notice when I do columns, I always write the numbers first, then do the square brackets. It's way too hard to do the square brackets first and then try and fit the numbers in. Just a little bit of a top tip for you there, All right? And finally, a square matrix. Hmm, let me think, what on earth could a square matrix be? Oh, that's right, it's a matrix. What is square? Congratulations, there is an example of a square matrix because it has the same number of rows as columns. There's a square matrix. Now here is a square matrix, and that one there is a special type of matrix, and I'll come back to it in the later video. It's called the identity matrix. Oh, very exciting. All right, identity, it seems to be going back to that matrix film again. One thing you do need to know that I haven't put down in any of these slides is those numbers are called my leading diagonals. Now, not just the ones, any numbers that go that way through the matrix, and I hope I've got this right way around for the video, are the leading diagonals, all right? That's gonna come up a little bit later in a question, but a square matrix. So I suppose T is equal to one or seven, let's do that. Is that a square matrix? Yes, because it's a one by one, and we could go on forever. Now, what does a matrix stand for? And this is pretty much the last part of this video. Matrices stand for information. Generally speaking, it will stand for something real world, or it can stand for real world. So if I owned a shop, for example, and I was looking for items of clothing, that were being sold on a Friday and a Saturday, this is how I could represent my matrix, where my rows could stand for the days, and my columns could stand for the items of clothing. So what we notice here, we've got hats, we've got six and three, coats, eight and seven, belts, four and one. So let me see, what does this number six here mean? Well, it means I sold six hats on Friday. ka -ching. notice, and that there would have an element of C, one, one. Remember, first row, first column. ka -ching. Sometimes people actually number them to help them work out a little bit later on, okay? But the question is how many coats were sold on a Saturday? Coats on a Saturday would be seven. And what element would that be? That element there would be C, row two, column two. So it would be C and two, two. Here's an example from the Cambridge General Mass textbook. Thank you very much, Cambridge, for letting me use your videos. You guys rock. Phenomenal resource, if I do say so myself. So here's an example. Matrix B shows the number of boys and girls in years 10 to 12 at a particular school. A. What is the order of matrix B? There you go. C is asking for the order. Do you remember what it is? The order is the size of the matrix. So it's rows, one, two, three, by two columns. So I could write a three by two. That would be perfectly acceptable for my answer for part A. Part B, what information is given by element B, one, two? So we're looking for B, one, two. Let me see, so B, ah, oh, there's B. So we want row one, column two. There are 63 girls in year 10. ka uh, which element gives the number of girls in year 12? So I want girls in year 12, that's that number there, 45. So it's row one, two, three by two. So we would be doing B, three, two. Yes, because it's the third row, second column. Wow, part D, how many boys are there in total? Well, how would we do that? Well, my boys in total would be all of those numbers in the boys column added together. So we would do 57 plus 48 plus 39, which equals? 144, how many students are there in year 11? Again, if I want students in year 11, find the two numbers that are in the year 11 row. So that would be 48 plus 54, which would give me 102. Now, obviously this is a CAS course, and so it's important to know how to use your CAS. I am using the TI Inspire. Change of school, guys. Sorry if you were following the class pad and I changed mid. 
life is difficult. Okay, so we can use the CAS to enter matrices. Long story short, when you have the TI Inspire, there's that little book icon that you can load up. And my advice is to use that icon there, all right? Now, there are some predefined ones already set up for you. So if you wanted a two by two, or a one by two, or a two by one, then you can hit those. And a lot of the matrices we ever use will be those. But on the whole, you'll use the button that says, choose me, choose me, all right? So you'll probably want to do that one. When you do that, what happens? Up comes a screen that says, create a matrix. And it'll ask you, how many rows do you want? And how many columns? And in this situation, I wanted three rows and two columns, which is in that screenshot. And then out comes this template. And we know what a template is. If you use the TI Inspire, you're now just gonna fill in the numbers. And lo and behold, what do we get? 57, 63, 48, 54, 39, and 45. And you just type the numbers in. Now, when I hit enter, that's fine, because what the calculator then does is say, well, okay, thanks very much. There's your matrix. But what if we wanna do something with it? I don't wanna keep typing in these matrices over and over and over again. It becomes tedious. What we can actually do is we can use our store, all right? So that's the blue and var button. And I think up the top, it says something like STO with an arrow. Now, basically we can store matrices, equations. We can store all sorts of things in a variable. And what you can see here is I've done exactly that. I've taken the matrix and entered it in, and then I've done store, which has given me the little arrow, and then using the keypad, I've just gone, well, A. And what that's done is, well, you think, well, hold on a moment, that hasn't seemingly done anything different, it's just repeated the matrix. Well, that's good. If it repeats the matrix, it means it has stored it. Thank you very much. What do we do now? Well, I just then hit the letter A and hit enter to see what happened, and out came my matrix. ka -ching. thank you very much. Now, why would this be helpful to us? As I said, this is rushing ahead a little bit, but what if I wanted to double all the values inside that matrix? Well, having already defined it as A, and my calculator's got it in, then funny enough, all I need to do is do 2A and hit the Enter key, and out comes that matrix with all of those numbers doubled. Now, it's a little bit ahead of a game, that's coming in the video, but entering and using the store is gonna make your life a lot, lot easier. What about if I want to get an element from my matrix? It does it as well using the square bracket notation. So because we've already defined my matrix as A, if I then do A square bracket 2 comma 2, now obviously in this situation, because the calculator doesn't understand 22, and you may have a matrix with 22 rows, then what we're going to do is put a comma. So the row, comma, and then the column. Yeah, so R comma C, and what comes out? was 54, and is that correct from my A, row 22? Two, two. There we go, now obviously I wanted it for A, not 2A. Interesting, I wonder what would happen if I did 2A, 2 comma 2. Well, I'll leave that to you to have a look. And that's pretty much the end of this video. Thank you very much guys for watching. There's a little bit more still to come. Don't stop yet, but uh, hopefully I'll see you in another video, take care. Thanks very much for watching guys. Yes, this is the end of another video. If you haven't already done so, can you click on my subscribe button? Yes, it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that I know that you are watching. Yes, it's greatly appreciated. Otherwise I feel like I'm sitting here just talking to myself. And then yes, there is mathsguru.com of which you can see a still of now. And what is over there? Well, all the videos ordered by textbook, ordered by topic. You can search for the videos, you can download notes, time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more coming up. Yeah, it's absolutely free to join. So I'm done. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in another video. Give me a shout out to your mates if you can. I just want to make sure that everyone finds maths interesting and easy. All right, take care, guys. See you again. Bye-bye. Stay safe.